And at number 10, Army Hammer. As more and more comes out against Army Hammer, it's safe to say that his career is basically over. The actor shot to fame in his roles in Call Me By Your Name and The Social Network. But recently, multiple women have come forward with disturbing allegations against Hammer, with many expressing that he had scary fetishes and many times he would take things way too far for the women. There were even allegations surfacing that he might be a can. The story got even darker last week when a woman came forward in a video press conference expressing that he forced himself on her for over four hours. Apparently during the incident, he slammed her head into a wall and whipped her feet with a crop, with her stating that she did not consent to these actions. As a result of the first string of allegations, he stepped away from an upcoming film with Jennifer Lopez called Shotgun Wedding. And now with these most recent allegations, it seems that he could actually face serious jail time. And in number nine, Ralph Phineas. After a backlash began mounting against writer J.K. Rowling calling her transphobic, many actors in the Harry Potter franchise spoke out against Rowling and in support of trans people. However, actor Ralph Phineas, who plays Voldemort in the film, stood by her, commenting in an interview, quote, I can't understand the vitriol directed at her. I can understand the heat of an argument, but I find this age of accusation and the need to condemn irrational. I find the level of hatred that people express about views that differ from theirs and the violence of language towards others disturbing. Here it seems he wasn't supporting her statements, rather just condemning the reaction that came from her statements. However, many fans were saddened that the actor did not understand why many found her statements to be offensive. And at number eight, Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson is getting tons of backlash after she starred in the movie, Music, directed by singer Sia. The film is about an autistic girl named Music, whom Hudson plays her older sister, and the film was being called an ableist film. The negative reaction against Hudson got even worse after it was announced that she was nominated for a Golden Globe Award for her performance in the movie. Tina Fey, the host of the 2021 Golden Globes, even made a comment against Hudson in her monologue, saying that Hudson's involvement in the film was the quote, most offensive casting since Kate Hudson was a Weight Watchers spokesperson. Despite the backlash, Hudson still appeared on the telecast saying that she loved making the movie. Quote, as an actress and a singer and a dancer, it's everything you'd want to experience. Hudson said. In an number seven, Maddie Ziegler. Dancer and now actress Maddie Ziegler got massive backlash after she decided to participate in the controversial Sia film called Music. In Music, Ziegler plays a non-verbal autistic teenager who comes under the care of her half-sister, played by Kate Hudson, after the death of her grandmother. When the trailer was released, it got immediate backlash from autism advocates, specifically for the fact that the lead role was not played by an autistic actor. Petitions sprung up on Change.org to stop the release of the film, saying the film contributes to harmful stereotypes. Ziegler has not responded to the backlash and said she has chosen to not promote the film whatsoever and rather focus people's attention on her upcoming projects. However, it's gonna be difficult for her to recover from such massive backlash. And in number six, James Corden. James Corden is another actor who is getting backlash after he was nominated for Best Actor in a Comedy for The Prom at the 2021 Golden Globes. His casting in the film was criticized first and foremost because Corden is a straight man who played a gay character in the film. But now he's getting more backlash after the nomination because of his lackluster performance. Many are specifically calling him out for a stereotypical depiction of a gay man, with many others bringing up his past performance in the film Cats as well, saying he should have never acted again after that performance. Have a number five, Lily Collins. Actress Lily Collins got in some backlash for being the lead character in one of the most hated TV shows this year, Emily in Paris. The show that was debuted on Netflix follows a 20-something year old Chicago woman who moves to Paris after she receives a surprising job opportunity. But the series was met with tons of criticism, critiquing the way that the city and its people are portrayed, as well as the cliches and stereotypes. And the reviews by both critics and viewers were harsh. On Rotten Tomatoes, the show received a 63% tomato meter scoring and a 59% audience rating. So not good, obviously. And a lot of the criticism fell to Collins. She responded to the criticism in an interview with Vogue Arabia, where she said that the criticism is disheartening, but she sees it as a way to improve. She also hopes to evolve the narrative in the second season. Am I the only one? I really don't understand the hate towards the show. I mean, it's not a great show, but like, I don't feel we need to hate on it. It was kind of cute. I don't know, maybe it's just me. And at number four, Gina Carano. Gina Carano was publicly fired after she shared a controversial Instagram story where she compared being conservative now to being Jewish in the Second World War. The post was an attempt to compare the events of the Second World War to so-called cancel culture. Carano ended up taking the picture down, but the backlash had already begun. She was quickly fired from The Mandalorian and the Star Wars universe, as well as being dropped by her agency, UTA. After the firing, many critiqued the decision and claimed this was proof of an anti-conservative bias in Hollywood. However, given her frequent controversial posts, this seemed to be the last straw, and it seems that her days in Hollywood might be over. And at number three, Tom Cruise. Late last year, a leaked audio recording showed Tom Cruise screaming at the top of his lungs 
on the set of the latest Mission Impossible movie. The yelling was because he witnessed a breach in COVID protocol by set members. And he was doing everything in his power to not have another filming delay that would increase production costs. Some of the yelling said, quote, we are creating thousands of jobs. I don't ever want to see it again, ever. And if you don't do it, you're fired. The response to the clip has been mixed, with some saying that the yelling was warranted and it was all in the name of safety. However, others felt that yelling to the degree that he was, was inexcusable and bordered on a toxic and harmful work environment. And at number two, Sharon Osbourne. The controversial actress and TV host was called out for her stance in support of Piers Morgan after he made some nasty remarks towards Meghan Markle. The viral moment took place on the show, The Talk, when Osborne was confronted about why she chose to support Morgan during his exit from Good Morning Britain. During the exchange, people felt she was insensitive towards her black co-host, Cheryl Underwood. As a result of the touchy moment, the show has gone on hiatus, with Osborne looking into why she was put on the chopping block, as well as network executives looking into allegations that Osborne had made insensitive comments toward co-hosts in the past. As well, actress Leah Romini has stated that Osborne got her fired from that show, and many are thinking this could lead to her departing the show for good. And at number one, Justin Timberlake. After the Framing Britney Spears documentary came out, Britney's fans started to realize just how horrible Justin had treated her. Some of these clips include him speaking about their intimate relationship on late night talk shows, when that was something that she was keeping hidden at the time, as well as the fact that he used a Britney lookalike in the Crimea River music video after the breakup which made everyone think that she had cheated. All this brought up past criticisms of Timberlake for his handling of the infamous Janet Jackson incident, which made her look way worse than him. In response to all the backlash, she posted a lengthy apology to Instagram. However, many felt that the apology was too little too late and was only made because he was being called out, not because he actually meant it. And since this controversy unearthed many terrible things about Timberlake, it could be too much for fans to forgive. Coming in at 10, Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid has had a truly bizarre life that deserves to be turned into a movie. The September 2009 Academy Award nominee Quaid and his wife Evie were arrested for not paying a $10,000 hotel bill. Following the incident, they were arrested again for squatting in a home they used to own. So what did they do? They skipped town and headed north to Canada. However, if you think that's weird, it got much weirder. Everyone assumed Quaid fled from the law, but he claimed they fled to avoid the Hollywood style whackers a secret organization that took celebrities out or manufactured scandals to discredit them. In an interview with the Vancouver Press, Quaid talked about the mysteries behind the organization, claiming that Heath Ledger, David Carradine and Chris Penn were the group's latest victims. Since then, Quaid was arrested once again and released back in 2015. In February of 2017, Quaid posted a video on Twitter which showed him displaying a full mountain man beard, pretending to get it on with his wife while she was wearing a Rupert Murdoch mask. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. Coming in at 9, Wesley Snipes. Snipes was a major player back in the day, starring in films like White Men Can't Jump, Julie Newmar, and of course the Blade Trilogy. Things were looking pretty good for Snipes until he failed to pay his taxes. Yeah, that's a big no-no. Usually if you're a Hollywood icon, you pay back your taxes plus some fines. However, not Snipes, no. His tax offenses were so bad that he went to jail, serving a year in the slammer for each year he failed to pay which was three. On top of that, he had to pay back 17 million in taxes and penalties, which completely put a stop on his thriving career. Lesson number one, pay your taxes, people. Coming in at eight, Paul Rubens. We all remember the bow-tied man-child Pee Wee Herman, right? The one that coined the phrase, I know you are, but what am I? I think anyway, don't quote me on that. Regardless, Paul Rubens became a fan favorite back in the 80s and into the 90s. However, this all changed drastically for him overnight when he was arrested in Florida for indecent exposure at an adult movie theater, with sheriffs claiming they spotted him masturbating during the film. The actor was 38 at the time and pleaded no contest, agreeing to take part in an anti-drug campaign to avoid trial. He attempted to come back, but that also blew up in his face when more charges were brought against him, this time related to child pornography. Officers seized thousands of items, including a Rob Lowe sex tape that was in his collection. It took a decade before he was welcomed back into the public eye, which he did surprisingly well, starring in the Netflix film Pee Wee's Big Holiday. What do you guys think? Do you think he deserved a second chance? I don't. Coming in at 7, Brendan Fraser. Brendan Fraser is a name most of us forgot about, and seemingly so did Hollywood. You won't find this actor appearing in much of anything anymore, at least nothing of merit. Fraser shot to fame when he appeared as Rick O'Connell in the Mummy Trilogy, a series which came to define him as an actor. He struck gold again in 2008 when he landed the leading role in the 3D fantasy Journey to the Center of the Earth, a worldwide box office success that made $242 million. However, things quickly 
quickly went downhill for the actor when he made the very poor decision to turn down the role in the sequel, which ultimately went to Dwayne The Rock Johnson. With the film going on to surpass the original, raking in $335 million, his poor decision seemed to draw the end of his career, I'm sure he's having major regrets these days. Coming in at 6, Jennifer Grey. Jennifer Grey was an 80s darling, starring in films like Dirty Dancing and Ferris Bueller's Day Off. However, she quickly vanished from the spotlight and failed to book any major roles following her success. Why was this? Well, if you didn't know, Grey was known for her nose, but as her career began to grow in the 90s, she got a nose job, which left her looking completely different, made casting her that much harder because people simply didn't recognize her. Grey once said, I quote, It was the nose job from hell. I'll always be this once famous actress nobody recognizes because of a nose job. Coming in at 5, Rob Lowe. As mentioned in our number 8 point, St. Elmo's fire star Rob Lowe had a sex tape. That's right, it was the first video of a celebrity having sex to be copied and sold at large around the world. But to make things worse, the video was of him having sex with a year old girl, which resulted in his career taking a serious nosedive. According to reports, Lowe was in Atlanta at the 1988 Democratic Convention when he took home two girls after meeting them in a nightclub, unaware that one was just years old. However, the actor escaped prosecution as the legal age of consent in Georgia is just 16. He took yet another blow though when a second clip was leaked, showing him and a friend having sex with a woman at the same time. However, it didn't seem to negatively affect the actor too much as he went on to star in Wayne's World and Parks and Recreation. Lucky for some, I guess. Coming in at 4, Michael Richards. Seinfeld is considered to be one of the greatest television shows of all time. To most people, that is. Not me. I didn't like it. Michael Richards, of course, was one of the stars of the show. However, his long running career was quickly met by a brick wall when he did a live show in 2006 that resulted in him engaging in a battle of wits with a member of the audience. In a split second decision, he destroyed his entire career by responding to the man with a series of racial slurs, demanding that the African American customer be thrown out. A video surfaced of the incident which showed Richard stop midway through his show and tell the audience member, I quote, 50 years ago they'd have you hanging upside down with a fing fork up us. The audience was of course just as shocked as we were and the comedian left the stage without finishing his routine. Since then he has made a handful of small appearances but he has been unable to land any major roles in the industry. Coming in at 3, Mark Salling. Glee's Noah Puckerman was a fan favourite among viewers back in the day, but that all came quickly crumbling away from the actor when he was arrested in LA in December 2015 for charges related to pornography. According to investigators, they found a laptop, USB drive and a hard drive filled with thousands of pictures and videos of pornography. The actor was set to star in the miniseries Adi Shankar's Gods and Secrets, but was very quickly dropped when news broke, with the producer saying in a statement, I quote, The innocence of our planet's children is something that must be protected at all costs. Saling eventually agreed to a plea deal. However, before his sentencing, he hanged himself in a canyon near his LA home and was found dead on January 30th, 2018. Coming in at 2, Kevin Spacey. Oh, Kevin Spacey. Yet another person on our list that has become a Hollywood disgrace after reports of sexual misconduct conduct and assault were brought against him. In October 2017, actor Anthony Rapp accused Spacey of making sexual advances towards him. Rapp was just 15 years old at the time. Once this surfaced, many other men came forward with similar stories, all of which accused Spacey of harassment and assault. In 2018, Spacey was charged with indecent assault and battery against an 18-year-old boy and he was ultimately arrested. At the time, Kevin Spacey was starring in the film All the Money in the World, however, when these allegations came to light, his scenes were entirely reshot with the actor Christopher Plummer in his place. F you, Kevin Spacey. Oh, and on top of that, he used being gay as an excuse. You, Kevin Spacey. And finally in at number one, Bill Cosby. Bill Cosby was a legend back in the day, starring in the mega hit TV series The Cosby Show. However, the facade all came crashing down when several sexual assault allegations against the star became public, with the allegations spanning from the 1960s to the early 2000s. Although most of the cases fell outside of the statute of limitations, several lawsuits were filed against the actor, drawing the end of his prolific career. 25 colleges and universities rescinded Cosby's honorary degrees, and Walt Disney removed a statue of him from their Academy of Television, Arts and Sciences Hall of Fame Plaza. All episodes of The Cosby Show were pulled and clips were removed from TV Land's website. Even his talent agency ditched him. Deserved. 
rightly so. This guy is an utter and doesn't deserve any more attention than that. Coming in at 9, Jennifer Grey. Jennifer Grey was a household name in the 80s, quickly earning her the title of 80s darling following her performances in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Dirty Dancing. However, we no longer hear about Jennifer Grey, the actress that was predicted to rise to fame like her co-stars Matthew Broderick and Patrick Swayze. So what exactly happened? Well, one potential reason is because Grey has become completely unrecognisable since the days of her playing Bueller's sister. Back in the 80s, Grey was known for her nose. It was somewhat of a hot commodity, a trademark if you will. Well, her career quickly grinded to a halt in the early 90s when Grey got a nose job, opting for a smaller look to her original one. Grey once even stated, It was the nose job from hell. I'll always be this once famous actress nobody recognises because of a nose job. Yikes. In at 7, Lindsay Lohan. Of course, who could forget Lohan's fall from grace following her huge hit Mean Girls released back in 2004, as well as Freaky Friday and Herbie Fully Loaded. It seemed as though all the cards were in her favour until Lohan was taken to hospital on May 26, 2007, after getting into a car accident. She had only just been discharged from the Wonderland Centre rehab facility for undisclosed problems before Lohan was facing charges for a DUI, possession of and a misdemeanor hit and run following the accident. Now, if this didn't cement her downward spiral, she was arrested on the exact same charges just two months later. And yet again, only days after exiting rehab. Now, you might think that's the end of it, but oh no. Lohan continued acting for a short while, even starring in I Know Who Killed Me, where she played opposite herself in the two main roles, earning her the worst screen couple award at the 2008 Golden Raspberries, as well as the worst actress. You won't find Lohan in any films now. However, she is the executive producer of her own reality show called Lindsay Lohan's Beach Club, which airs on MTV. You should check it out. In at 5, Charlie Sheen. Sheen was at one time the highest paid actor in Hollywood. However, with such power comes a lot of pressure, with the actor turning to drugs and stupidity, destroying his own career in seconds. His demise came when he was first fired from TV shows for reasons related to drug addictions and anti-Semitic comments. He took his stupidity to a whole new level though when he began to verbally attack Chuck Lorre the man who gave Sheen his career. Not only that, but Sheen went on to tell the media that he was a warlock and that he had tiger blood. He then began to upload videos to the internet of him smoking weed and cursing his employers, also stating that he was a rock star from Mars. Following on from his meltdown, he revealed that he had HIV and knowing this fact, had sexual relations with around 200 partners. In at 4, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson seems to have had a slew of scandals over his long career. Shockingly though, it wasn't his DUI arrest that made Hollywood want to turn their back on the Braveheart star. It was actually the conversation he had with the police officer while in the back of the car. After refusing arrest and attempting to flee the scene, Gibson was eventually cuffed and detained. Oh boy, I bet he regrets the things he said following this. While in the back of the car, he repeatedly threatened the police officer, stating that he owned Malibu and would spend every cent he had on getting even. According to the transcript obtained by the LA Times, Gibson blurted out, I quote, a barrage of anti-Semitic remarks about Jews, yelling, I quote again, the Jews are responsible for all the wars in the world. Are you a Jew? Oh boy. However, Gibson is refusing to face the act and continues to make movies, usually ones he's directed, including the likes of Hacksaw Ridge, which was received well by critics, even getting a 10 minute standing ovation at the Venice Film Festival, as well as earning an Academy Award nomination for Best Director. Coming in at number 3, Judy Garland. Now, I should state right off the bat that Garland had a truly difficult life, particularly during her younger years during the making of The Wizard of Oz. Garland coped for more than 40 years, however, in the 1940s, her iconic performance performances and stellar portrayals transformed into temper tantrums, resulting in her getting fired from shows for a handful of reasons, including being a no-show. She eventually wound up bankrupt after years of drug abuse, alcoholism and failed marriages. Just after her 47th birthday, Garland died from an accidental overdose of prescribed medicines. However, as I said before, Garland was doomed to fail before she even started, being prescribed a number of different medications when she was just 15 years old on the set of Wizard of Oz. Not only that, but the treatment she faced on that set was truly abysmal. Coming in at number 2, Amanda Bynes. During her young years, Amanda Bynes was a rising star, even headlining her own series, The Amanda Show, and starring in films like She's the Man and Easy A. However, like many child stars before her, Bynes ran afoul with drugs and alcohol. But what really cemented her fall from grace was her Twitter meltdown following her arrest. The meltdown occurred in 2012, with tweets such as claiming she wanted Drake to murder her vagina, as well as tweeting Rihanna taunting that, I quote, 
Chris Brown beat you because you're not pretty enough. She went on to call Miley Cyrus and Jay Z ugly and berated herself for the same thing. But off of Twitter, she was diagnosed with bipolar disorder and placed twice in a psychiatric facility following an incident where she set her neighbor's driveway on fire. However, years later, Bynes had seemingly reformed, heading towards a career in the fashion industry and stating that she no longer had any interest in acting. However, that all went out the window in 2017 when she stated that she was ready to come back. Starting off our list at number 10 is Katherine Heigl. We gotta be honest here and say there's probably a few interviews that affected her career, but one back in 2008 pretty much landed her on Hollywood's blacklist. She took the lead in the 2006 movie Knocked Up, and the movie, as well as her performance, was well received. Apparently not by the actress herself though, who opened up about how she felt about the movie later on in 2008. In the January issue of Vanity Fair, she said the movie was, I quote, a little sexist. It paints women as shrews, as humorless and uptight, and it paints the men as lovable, goofy, fun loving guys. It exaggerated the characters, and I had a hard time with it some days. Why is this how you're portraying women? This interview alone was enough for people in Hollywood to turn away from wanting to work with her, but it was sealed when she did another interview in 2008 where she dissed the writing in her show Grey's Anatomy. The actress has to figure out a way to either keep her mouth shut or just choose her words wisely. I'm not a rude person. I'm not an unkind or mean person. I would never go out of my way or consciously try to hurt anyone's feelings or, or make them feel bad or uncomfortable or not be professional and do my job. I like my job. And at number nine is Paula Abdul. Back in January 2007, the American Idol judged an interview that went viral instantly. Throughout the video, which happened to be filmed, she slurred her words, wobbled, swayed, and spoke a bunch of nonsense, basically. News anchors from Q13 Fox News Live streamed Paula from New York to do a live interview with her, but because of how she was acting, they thought there was some sort of connection issue. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if she can hear us right now. They kept saying there must be a problem and that she can't hear them properly. But that wasn't really the case at all. Even when she did respond to their questions, she was acting like she was highly intoxicated. She was closing her eyes, slurring her words, just acting kind of all manic and weird. Later, she tried to explain, saying that there was a connection error at first, and they had a station from Alabama in her ear, along with the Fox News at the same time. But once they fixed it, she blamed the rest of the erotic behavior on just being tired. She she said, fatigue and exhaustion just added to the whole thing looking so disoriented. But no alcohol and no drugs, absolutely no. The interview had a huge effect on her career. Two years later, she wasn't able to land another contract with American Idol. The world didn't see much of her for years until she snagged a judging role on So You Think You Can Dance. However, her career just hasn't been the same ever since. Sliding into the number 8 spot on our list is 5 Seconds of Summer. Back in 2015, the band managed to alienate both their fans and a lot of fellow artists and celebrities in just one interview. And since then, the world hasn't heard much of them since. In December 2015, their interview with Rolling Stone left people really pissed off. Michael Clifford, who admitted during the interview that he was hungover, bashed the American Music Awards, which they performed at the night before. He said the show was compromised and had, I quote, a lot of fake people. He also called out Justin Bieber and said he thinks he hates them for no apparent reason at all. Luke Hemmings from the band left fans and parents feeling disgusted after saying, when you put four young dudes on a tour bus playing theaters and arenas, you're going to have sex with a lot of girls, I guess. We had a good time. The interviewer awkwardly joked back, asking if they slept with multiple girls in one night or at the same time. And he responded with, I feel like I shouldn't say. You can say the possibility of that is high. People were pretty repulsed by their interview and things just haven't been the same for their stardom since that day. Next up at number seven is R. Kelly. He did some major damage for his career back in 2008 when he made comments about being with underage girls. Girls. But this interview came after he went to trial for being accused of child pornography. Kelly was accused of making a 27 minute sex tape with an underage female, but after going to trial, the jury declared him not guilty on all 14 counts. People were all feeling some type of way about him, some believed him and some didn't. But his interview after the trial didn't help paint a very good self portrait. During an interview with BET, he was straight up asked, do you like teenage girls? After everything that went on with court, you would think his response would be an immediate no. No. However, he responded by saying, when you say teenage, how young are we talking? He went on to say that he has some 19 year old female friends, but none that are technically illegal. After the interview was aired on BET, Kelly's team saw it and demanded that it never be shown again. It was already too late though, the damage had already been done. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my 
And at number six is Miles Teller. The actor had a promising career, especially after his role in Whiplash back in 2014. But it was after an interview in 2015 where his career took a hit and began to stall. In August 2015, he did an interview with Esquire, and he thought it would be appropriate to tell the female writer and their waitress that the bar glass was modeled after his private parts. He obviously used a much more vulgar term, but I'm definitely not going to repeat it. He was pretty sassy too, trying to demand the writer to cut his meat for him when their food came. The interview didn't paint the actor in a very positive light and says that things were changed around. After receiving tons of backlash from it, he told Vulture, I quote, If how that story made me look was how I really was, I would think I was the biggest douchebag too. I know who I am and it's not who I was in that story. Since then he hasn't been able to book movies like he used to and has only about 6 credits to his IMDb in the last 4 years. Some of you might not even heard of any of them. Happy through the list at number 5 is The Chainsmokers, another time when a band tried a little too hard to be edgy and just came off as super lame instead. Back in 2016, Billboard did a cover story on the band where they said things that people weren't too thrilled about. Andrew Tagger told the magazine, I quote, We rage every night. My mom's going to hate reading that, but she already knows. But his DJ partner Alex Pals said that they were pros, saying, But you'll never see us getting carried out of a club. We're way too good at drinking. Both band members continued on with the interview and thought it was appropriate to bring up their groupies, even though they both had live-in girlfriends at the time. Alex said, Even before success, was number one. And then Andrew chimed in saying, Like why am I trying to make all this money? I wanted to hook up with hotter girls. I had to date a model. We're just frat bro dudes, you know what I mean? The loving ladies and stuff. And drum roll please, for the worst part of the entire interview, the boys also revealed the size of their private, saying that they measured from tip to tip. Classy. Here we are at number 4 with Gary Coleman. The actor sadly passed away at just 42 years old, so this is in no way to disrespect him, but to share what happened leading up to his very controversial death. The actor always had medical issues, but often didn't like to speak on them. On May 26, 2010, the actor fell down the stairs while at home with his wife and had to go to the hospital after cracking his head. He was treated, but the next day he went unconscious and landed on life support where he died on May 28th. People were suspicious as to what actually happened and rumors began to fly saying that his wife had actually pushed him down the stairs. Now, the only reason that they thought this was because they went to court after she accused him of physically abusing her. The couple was always known for their altercations and even appeared on the show Divorce Court. This is what led to Gary having an interview that impacted his career in a very negative way. One of the female hosts on The Insider asked him if he abuses his wife, and when he wouldn't flat out deny it, she begins to question if it's true or not. And that's basically when he lost it. He ended up saying to her, I quote, Go F yourself. I don't know you. You, I don't care about you. Your life doesn't matter to me. If you get hit by a bus tonight, I'm not going to care. There is no abuse that goes on in my house. Now, if people believe that I'm waffling, then they can go do what they Did need to do. Did you abuse your wife? Did you abuse her? Did you lay your hand and on you her? And you know what? You can go the same place. Then he storms off the set and tells all of the hosts to go f Selves. People were stunned by his anger and reaction, and he wasn't very well received after that. Alright guys, at number 3 is Megan Fox. It is no surprise to anyone anymore that her career started to fizzle away after the Transformers incident when she publicly bashed the director. In 2009, Fox told Wonderland that the director of the film series, Michael Bay, is, I quote, like Napoleon and he wants to create this insane, infamous, madman reputation. He wants to be like Hitler on his sets, and he is. She went on to call him a nightmare to work with and said that he has no skills at all. As a result from her interview remarks, she was fired from Transformers Dark Side of the Moon and was only booking smaller roles and cameos. It wasn't until she later apologized to Bay that she was allowed back in the director's blockbuster movies, which is how she got to start in his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle franchise. However, Bay told GQ it was actually Steven Spielberg who demanded that he hire Fox, and added that she may not have been the most professional actress on set. I thought Michael Bay was someone you don't want to be on bad terms with, but if the real issue is Steven Spielberg, that's even worse. In at number 2 is Charlie Sheen. He has a list of things that all play a factor on why his career came to an end. One of them was his ridiculous and totally inappropriate behavior during his interview with ABC when he confessed to still being on drugs. Actually, when he asked if he still uses drugs, his exact response was, I am on a drug. It's called Charlie Sheen. It is not available. If you try it once, you will die. Your face will melt off and your children will weep over your exploded body. He went on to talk about sleeping with prostitutes and said that they are the best at what they do and has 
has no problem admitting that part of his sex life. The entire interview is manic and whack, but no one could ever forget his famous line when asked about how he survived his huge drug binges. He responded with, I have tiger blood in my veins. Since then, it's been an ongoing joke, along with his career. However, rumor has it that he has sobered up and it's possible he will be making a comeback. Taking the number one spot on our list is Tara Reid, only because it was so shocking. The sweet blonde shocked the world after showing up drunk to an interview, or so it appeared. Back in August 2018, she did an interview with Today Extra on Australia's Channel 9 to promote her movie The Last Sharknado. But throughout the interview, she was slurring her words, spoke very quietly, and often just trailed off. When you watch it, there's moments when you feel like she might actually fall asleep. It really makes sense from the first one. It, it really does it. It makes a com like a complete circle. And After the interview, rumors started that she was drinking again, which was a problem from her past. She released a statement afterwards, not giving any kind of reasoning for her weird behavior, but insisted that people have no reason to worry about her health. However, people were still very much worried. In at number 10, Kanye West. Now, I know what you're thinking. If you're a fan of Kanye West, then you will most likely hit that dislike button and comment something like, what are you talking about? Kanye still has a career. I get that. But bear with me on this one. While he was on the show back in 2016, he went on a rant that not only left Ellen speechless, but also lasted for six minutes. He talked about everything as well, from race to his constant tweeting, and much of the interview wasn't even able to air on television because of just how off-brand he was for the demographic of that show. By that, I mean that he said a lot of swear words. That was probably one of his more calmer moments, but just six months after this interview, Kanye's mental health really started to deteriorate. Dispatch audio from the day that Kanye West was hospitalized for exhaustion reveals that authorities were called to the scene of a psychiatric emergency, which makes what he said in that interview feel a little more dark than inspiring. In at number nine, Wendy Williams. Both Wendy and Ellen host daytime talk shows, so it's natural that there would be sort of a bit of tension between them, I guess, or you know, sibling rivalry on networks. I don't know if that's a thing, but if it is, these guys have it. Both Wendy and Ellen host daytime talk shows, so it's natural that there would be a bit of tension between them. Although Wendy Williams is typically the first to throw some shade Ellen's way and has done so numerous times. One of the more awkward times that she tried to insult Ellen was when she plugged her PETA ad by acknowledging that Ellen was vegan. Then she asked her, how do you live without bacon? Which forced Ellen DeGeneres to reply that she thinks pigs are smart, so that means Wendy Williams was talking about PETA in order to shame someone for being vegan? I, I don't really understand her. Her next Ellen insult was a bit more on the nose, but still a bad joke. When she came on the show, they played a game of heads up and Williams got to insult Ellen just one more time. Following this, Wendy Williams' reputation definitely took a bit of a hit, but with Ellen's ship now going down, I bet Wendy is quite pleased. In at number eight, Sean Hayes. Right at the top of the episode, Will and Grace star Sean Hayes wasted no time insulting Ellen. In what is now referred to as the Battle of the Gays, Sean repeatedly calls her Helen from the moment that the episode starts, which clearly starts to bother her as it totally botches the opening dialogue for the episode. From there, it just gets worse. He tossed his ring into the mug on the table as a joke because Ellen complained that it hurt her when he tapped her knee. Sean then proceeds to pluck the ring out of his drink and then flick the excess liquids all over Ellen. Ellen then tried to transition the conversation by talking about how long Will and Grace has been on the air and then Sean then takes another jab at Ellen by saying that it's been running longer than her own show. And sure, it's great that he's been on a long running show, but that's about all that he's done after this disastrous interview. In at number seven, Blake Shelton. Ellen is notorious for meddling in the relationships of celebrities but she's always prying for more personal details and desperately trying to convince her guests that they need to get married. I mean, she bought Jennifer Lopez a clock with her and A-Rod kissing on it, and shortly after, that pair got married. So when Blake Shelton came on the show, she tried to do the same thing. However, unbeknownst to Ellen, Blake never received the clock at the end of the show. So when he came back on the show and Ellen asked him again if he had plans to marry Gwen Stefani, he just kind of let her have it. And I love that he called her out on using the clock as just a prop to harass her guests to get married. Although his singing career still continues, his relationship ended in divorce due to irreconcilable differences. I wonder if Ellen had a role in that. In at number six, David Arquette. When David appeared on The Ellen Show alongside comedian Wanda Sykes, they played a very uncomfortable game of Never Have I Ever. At first, David seemed to just be really excited to be there, but as the interview segment went on, fans started to worry about him. Back in 2011, David made a very public announcement that he was checking himself into rehab for alcoholism, so when he came on the show a few years later, people were worried that he had fallen off the wagon again. As he misspoke in the segment, he pleaded with Ellen to cut that part out of the show, for which Ellen just said no. She then joked about how it was meant to be educational, and I don't know if he was drunk 
for this episode, but not too many big productions have taken a chance on him following this interview. In at number five, Jennifer Lawrence. Ellen was put in an awkward situation during her interview with Jennifer Lawrence in 2012. What began as Ellen asking Jennifer about her new cat quickly spiraled into trans jokes that Ellen didn't know how to deal with. Lawrence explained that she always imagined cats as being female and dogs as being male. So when she bought her female cat and it began acting like a boy, she renamed it to Chaz Bono. And for those of you who completely missed that jab, Chaz is the transgender son of Cher and the late Sonny Bono. What followed next was just bizarre too. They had a slideshow of the cat going that was just supposed to line up with her story, but that curveball joke really put Ellen in a weird spot and the audience had to watch her kind of tiptoe around it into a new topic. Now, this didn't exactly end Jennifer's career as an actor, but it certainly gave her a bad reputation in Hollywood. You can consider that a career destroyed. In number four, Giada De Laurentiis. The 2017 cooking segment is now a viral disaster for all to watch online. It was pretty much a disaster right from the jump and having Nicole Kidman on a guest really didn't help. Giada was teaching both Nicole and Ellen how to make some of her favorite celebrity chef recipes. At least that was the intended plan. Instead, Giada made sexual innuendos about rice balls, insinuating that Ellen's never handled anything like that, which even slightly insults Nicole Kidman, who reminds Giada that this is a family show. However, Giada doesn't stop with the insults. From there, she quickly pivoted to insulting Ellen's lack of culinary skills, even saying that her rice balls look like dog food. After those few insults, Ellen basically bailed on the entire segment. She started eating the food on the table and overall just roasting how bad it was with Nicole Kidman joining in. And that was the last time that we heard about Giada De Laurentiis. In at number three, Caitlyn Jenner. The conversation began very lighthearted between newly transitioned Caitlyn Jenner and Ellen. She praised Jenner for her work in the transgender movement and her importance in that role, but when she tried to make Caitlyn explain her previous views on gay marriage, things got tense. At least Caitlyn stood up for herself and explained that her opinion has changed over time. I mean, she literally changed her entire identity and Ellen is still asking if her opinions are the same. Clearly Jenner's views and opinions have changed slightly, but she noted that because she's a traditionalist, she still can't understand why people don't want gay marriage. I'm not saying she's right, by the way. I'm simply pointing out a moment where a celebrity insulted Ellen and it kind of well, trashed her career a little bit. In at number two, Jessica Simpson. Trainwreck is perhaps the best way to sum up this interview between Jessica Simpson and Ellen. Much like when David Arquette was on the show, people also thought that Jessica was drunk. I realized that she hadn't been on the show for four years, but it felt like she had never been in a conversation before. She would say something, and then as Ellen was responding, Simpson would stop her, go back on what she said, and then stumble a bit, and then change your answer. It was really weird. Like, you're on Ellen. You're not being grilled by Chris Hansen in your kitchen. She must have been extremely nervous, but following this interview, her career never really saw an uptick that most hoped for after appearing on the show. The Ellen bump, I believe they call it. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> Dakota Johnson's appearance on Ellen will go down in history as a key moment that led to the downfall of Ellen herself. It really opened up everyone's eyes as to how little she cares about her guests or the show itself anymore. If you don't know what happened, the last time that Dakota Johnson was on the show, Ellen reamed her out for not getting a birthday invitation. So when the following birthday rolled around, Dakota made sure to invite Ellen. Although Ellen missed the party and then had the audacity to ask her again why she never received an invite. Thus leading to Dakota calling Ellen out in front of everyone for lying. Ellen was busy getting chummy with former US President George Bush during Dakota's birthday and thus began the slow ending to her career. Starting off our list at number 10 is Jesse Eisenberg. The actor has always been called socially awkward and has always shown this not so welcoming attitude when it comes to the press. One of his awkward and demeaning interviews went viral back in 2013 when he did an interview with Romina Puga from Univision about his new movie coming out called Now You See Me. Yeah. I'll tell you the problem with the trick is that the thumbs don't tired. look like an end of a finger. You just yeah. have a fat thumb though. No, my thumb's fine, thank you, but... Romina had a few notes written on her hand so that she could remember them during the interview and he had no problem calling her out on them, saying that she can't remember a simple question and also told her that she is a horrible interviewer. What did you write on your hand? Nothing. Well, I saw there was a lot of things. What was a it? A lot of things. Are they questions? No. Are you secretly hiding questions <laughs> for the interview? You're wondering what it's like to work with Morgan Freeman and you can't will, remember that? Uh... His exact way of saying it was, he asked her if she knew the comedian Carrot Top. She responded with, yes, horrible. And Jesse said, I quote, well, you are like the Carrot Top of interviewers. The interview awkwardly continued on where he continued to make comments about the interview being over soon and also said that if she was trying to find her way in a crowd, he wouldn't actually want to find her and that he'd rather be alone. Do you know the um, comedian Carrot Top? Yes, horrible. Well. 
um, you were like the uh, carrot top of interviewers. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. No, and it's a good thing. It's I'm a good go thing. Cry now. No, don't cry now. Cry after the interview's over. Well, isn't he just a ray of sunshine? People haven't received his interviews very well, and the majority of them can't get on board with his whole attitude and behavior. In at number nine is Paris Hilton. This interview was more of a chance for her to have a comeback in her career, which was already destroyed, but she just kind of blew it. After her career started to fade out, we didn't really hear much from her until 2011 when she signed up for an interview with ABC, which was meant to give us a look into her life and what she's up to now. The interview took place at her home, which started out great. We got to see her home, her dogs, and she just seemed to be in good spirits. That was until the reporter, Dan Harris, began to question whether her celebrity status was running out and being taken over by her close friend, Kim Kardashian. He worded it as nicely as possible, but she just couldn't handle the thought of it. He brought up the fact that her show called The World According to Paris had received a low rating and asked if that upsets her. You could clearly tell that it does, but she responds simply by just saying no. She begins to talk to her publicist who is standing off set saying that she wants to be done with the interview. She ends up walking off but her mic was still on and she told her publicist that she doesn't want any of this footage being used. Do you ever worry about your moment having passed? <laughs> you want to wrap up? But I, when I was curious about one thing going back to... So, what do you guys think? Do you think she was acting like a diva by giving one word answers and leaving? Tell me down in the comments. Next up at number 8 is John Mayer. Back in 2010, he did an interview with Playboy where he sparked a heated debate among his fans and people lost a lot of respect for him. His relationships with stars like Jessica Simpson have all been documented in the tabloids, but he dished on their relationship in a very strange and disrespectful way. When asked about his ex, Jessica, he started to speak about their sex life, saying that she was was like crack cocaine to him sexually. He said he wanted to snort her and would sell his belongings even if she charged him $10,000 to sleep with her. He continues to share how many people he's been sleeping with since the breakup and says he also spends a lot of his mornings watching porn in bed. If the sex talk wasn't enough to set off his fans, his comments about race would. He said, I'm just very. And if you can't handle my very, then I'm a douchebag. That's why black people love me. He went on to say that he gets a hood pass and refers to them as the n-word. Immediately after his interview was published, it caused tons of controversy where he was called an asshat and became a trending topic, but not for the reasons that you really want to be trending. Sliding into number 7 is Tom Cruise. We've seen him lose his temper on a few different occasions, so it's not much of a surprise that he's wound up on this list. He made comments that people didn't appreciate, like the time he criticized Brooke Shields for taking antidepressants. She took them for postpartum depression, but since Tom is a Scientologist, he doesn't believe in those those kinds of drugs or therapy. So, during an interview back in June 2005 with NBC's Today Show, the reporter Matt Lauer asked him about his criticism and he didn't like that it was brought up. The actor ended up calling him a glib and told him he doesn't know what he's talking about. In anger, he said, you don't know the history of psychiatry. I do. He continued to discuss his Scientology beliefs, which causes enough controversy in itself, and said that because Lauer admitted to using psychiatric drugs in the past, he was actually advocating the use of Ritalin and that it's wrong. I've never agreed with psychiatry, ever. Uh, before I was a Scientologist, I never agreed with psychiatry. And then when I started studying the history of psychiatry, I started realizing more and more why I didn't agree with psychiatry. His anger, defensive mechanism, and attitude isn't a shock really, but it just still isn't necessary. At number six is Joan Rivers. The woman is known to be a harsh critic when it comes to her time on Fashion Police, but is it harsh if it's true? That is the real debate. Some people appreciate her brutal honesty, while others think that it's just straight up rude, which is the main reason why she went into a rage and walked out in the middle of a CNN interview back in 2014. She was doing a live stream interview with CNN host Frederica Whitfield, who started off by joking around saying that her show Fashion Police was mean, and that was enough to trigger Rivers. Everything from that moment on just escalated very quickly. CNN asked her why she fights to end animal cruelty while she still wears fur. And her response was, are you wearing leather shoes? Then shut up. The cover well, of your book, you're wearing a fur and you knew that there would probably be animal rights activists. You know, this whole PETA. interview is becoming a defensive interview. No! Uh, are you wearing leather shoes? Yeah, and shut no, up. I'm she then continued to go on a rant saying that the interview is turning into a defensive one and she insults the lady one last time before storming off set. She said, you are not the one to interview a person who does humor, sorry, and rips off her earpiece before leaving. And you do this and you're mean and you're that. You are not the one to interview a person who does humor, sorry. Are we serious? However, she didn't turn off her microphone and after leaving the set, they recorded her calling the host the C word. Her exit strategy wasn't thought out very well. 
How we do the list at number five is Jerry Seinfeld. Fans were shook when the hit TV series Seinfeld came to an end, and everyone was pointing the finger at Jerry, wondering what exactly happened. He didn't like that very much, and he lost his cool on Larry King back in 2007 when he asked him about it during an interview. He was live on CNN for the interview and was actually there to promote his new project, B Movie. Larry ends up asking him if he canceled the show or if the network canceled him. A pretty standard question to ask since the show was around for so many years and was coming to an end all of a sudden. But rather than simply answering him, he got extremely offended and started to become a bit ignorant. He made it clear that he had 75 million viewers and that it was his choice to quit. Larry tries to move on from the question when he sees his response, but Jerry continues to interrupt him even to a point where he can't cut to a commercial break when he is supposed to. 75 what? million viewers okay. last episode. What are you tell me? Take it so bad. Well, that's a, a big difference between being canceled and being number one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> he even says the famous line, do you know who I am? You are do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> Jewish guy, Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. Fans responded to the interview saying that he overreacted and could have simply just answered the question gracefully. There was no point to prove. We clearly all know that your show was a success. All right, you guys, at number four, we have Mel Gibson. Are you shocked? No, didn't think so. He's known for having anger issues, and the majority of them it has been well documented through audio recordings or videos, so it's not like I'm just assuming all of this. One of his interviews went viral back in 2010 when we got to see a piece of his angry side come out. He was doing a live stream interview with WGN News, and the reporter Dean Richards asked him about some incidents from his past, like his alcohol use and bad temper. Four years prior to the interview, he was arrested and got a DUI, so he asked if he feels the public would receive him differently now. Mel was outraged by the question, which he showed by the expression on his face. He responded by saying, That's almost four years ago, dude. I mean, I've moved on. I guess you haven't. He ends up continuing and says, Let's move on, dude. Come on. He doesn't say goodbye or anything as Dean ends the interview. He just gives a thumbs up and sips his coffee. And right after the interview ends, he calls Dean an not knowing that the video was still recording. It's good to see you back in the saddle and uh, doing what you do best. Thanks a lot for joining us, Mel. Take care. Bye bye. In spot number three is Tracy Morgan. It's hard to forget about the interview he did in 2007 when he was clearly drunk on camera. Ladies, <laughs> my Mercedes, I'm the Ooh Chow. The reporter, Robert Holguin, seemed super uncomfortable and out of his element when dealing with him throughout the interview on ABC7. But he remained professional and was a good sport about it, laughing and making jokes with Tracy, who was completely out of control. Morgan took his shirt off, which ultimately ripped his microphone off, and began slapping his belly, calling it a loaf of bread, and said it was his mating call. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so. Robert tried hard to keep the interview going and talking about his upcoming show, but Tracy was in his own little world. After the interview cut to commercial, you could hear Robert saying, I am going to get fired. At number two on our list is Roseanne Barr. She had an incredibly successful career, but it crumbled after she tweeted out some racist comments. She lost everything, including her ABC sitcom called Roseanne. She tweeted out a comment where she compared Barack Obama's advisor, Valerie Jarrett, to a character from Planet of the Apes and linked her to a group called Muslim Brotherhood. During an interview with Inside, she spoke about the incident with a cigarette in hand and lost all control of her emotions and began to scream. Like literally scream. She went off the rails yelling, I thought the b was white. She continues to scream out different curse words and in between takes a puff from her cigarette, maybe in hopes to try and calm down, which clearly didn't work. I thought the b was white! Damn it! This is her back? Why? Seriously? Throughout the interview, she looks totally out of it and at time asks the producer, are you filming? The producer can't help but laugh at her erratic behavior and just keeps repeating himself, telling her that she's already explained this to them 300 times, but she just keeps going on about it and not gracefully. Taking our number one spot is Michael Jackson. Over 10 years ago, he was charged on different allegations of child sexual abuse that were filed against him. A documentary about his life, including these charges, was released and showed an interview where he made inappropriate comments that left people stunned. When speaking about his own children, he admitted during an interview that he allowed their friends to come over and sleep in his bed with him. Mm -mm. 
Disney. Nothing normal about that. He explained that he doesn't see any problem with it because I quote, it's all very charming. The interviewer was baffled that he would be saying these things considering the allegations that were against him. But Michael stood firm on his beliefs and referred to the young children as his friends. He simply didn't see anything wrong with a grown man being friends with young children. After hearing these things come out of the singer's mouth himself, his reputation was never really the same after that. 